In this video, we'll take a look at the different types of blueprint graphs that you'll be working with and what they are used for. We'll also show you the basics of navigating those graphs so you feel more comfortable moving around within the blueprint editor. So here we are inside of the editor and we have two stalls here with two different blueprints. One of them uses the construction script and the other uses the event graph. And we're gonna take a look at both of those more in depth here. So let's look at the first one here. They're both spotlights, but they're slightly different. Let's select this first one here. Inside of the viewport, you can see over in the details panel that we have all kinds of different components that are being used to make up this spotlight. So we have the different mesh pieces. We also have a light that is being used to project light into the actual environment. Below all of that, though, we have a section called default, and we have some properties in here that we can adjust. These allow us to change how this light actually functions. So here we're adjusting the yaw, adjusting the pitch. Here we are adjusting the light radius, and we could change the color if we wanted to. We turn it off completely. And we can adjust the light beam, which is like the light shaft that you see there. We can adjust the opacity of that. How is this working? If we select this and we go to the Edit Blueprint button and open in the Blueprint Editor, it's going to open up to the Event Graph. If it doesn't, go ahead and click the Event Graph tab. Because I wanted to take a moment to describe some of the methods that you'll be using for navigating your graphs before we break down the construction script. Inside of our graph here, it's completely empty. You can see at the top it says right-click to create new nodes, but we're going to right-click and hold in the graph. And as you move your mouse button, that's going to allow you to drag and kind of move around the graph here. So this is going to be the way that you move around your graph. If you use the left mouse button and hold, what you're going to get is a selection box as you drag. So if you have a bunch of nodes in your graph and you want to select them all, you can make a selection box around them and then move them wherever you want. That's how you're going to be doing selecting. If you mouse wheel down, that's going to zoom out so you can get a wider view of your node network. Mouse wheel up, we'll zoom in. It will stop at a one-to-one -one ratio here, so if you wanted to zoom in even further, you can hold control and mouse wheel up. That's going to allow you to zoom in past that one-to-one -one ratio. And that's really the basics of navigating the graph. You can feel free to get comfortable with navigating around, making selections, zooming in and out. But what I want to do now is actually add a node and talk about connecting nodes as well. So right-click to add new nodes. If I right-click, we're going to get the context menu. Okay, so the context menu is going to give you contextual suggestions for nodes that you can add to your graph based on the type of blueprint that you are in and the things that you have selected in your blueprint. So for example, if I were to go to the spotlight here and right-click, now we're going to get the ability to call functions on the spotlight. If I select the mesh, now we can call events for the mesh as well as all the other nodes that we can add as well. If we right-click in the graph again, there is the ability to turn off context sensitivity, which you can check this option here or uncheck it to turn it off. That's going to give you all the nodes that you can add. Now, you do need to be a little bit careful with this based on the type of class that you are working in. Some of the nodes that you try to add may or may not work. So we're inside of an actor class right now. If you try to do maybe some networking stuff or some other types of functionality that isn't relevant to actors, then you may get some errors. So as a best practice, I recommend that you keep this on until you're a little bit more familiar with using Blueprint. So let's go ahead and actually add our first node. We're right-click, we're in the context menu. We're going to add an event. So I'm going to click this button to expand some additional options. And we're going to add the event begin play. So event when play begins for this actor. Go ahead and add that. Once we add that, it's going to give us a node inside the graph here, our first node, which we can select it by holding it in left mouse button dragging around where we want to move it. We can deselect it by clicking off of it as well. Now it's got two pins on it. I don't really want you to worry about the delegates right now. We don't need to be too concerned with those. All we need to be concerned with is this pin here, which is the executable. Now events are what kick off Blueprint script. Whatever we have connected to this wire will get executed. Now we're creating wires by left clicking and dragging off of this pin. And when we do so, when we release, it gives us the ability to add a node to connect to this automatically. So we can search through this list and add different kinds of nodes. For the purposes of testing, I'm just going to search for a node called print string. This is a utility node. Essentially what it does is it prints a string to the log and optionally to the screen. So we use this quite a bit for debugging and testing our blueprints. I'm going to click print screen to add it. And you can see it's already been connected. Now, if for some reason you want to disconnect this, you can hold the Alt button and left-click on either executable while. That'll break the connection. 
at which point you can reconnect it by left clicking and dragging and making the connection like so. Now we could change the string, what we want it to print to the screen here. You'll notice that it has an out executable wire, so we could add something to the end of this if we wanted to. But for now, we're going to leave it just like this. This is our simple first Blueprint script here. I'm going to compile and save this, close it out, come back to the level editor here. When we play in the editor, we should see in the upper left here the text, hello. So let's go ahead and play. And there it is in the upper left. It says hello. We've done our first bit of Blueprint visual scripting. I'm going to go back to this Blueprint, open it up and edit it. I'm just going to delete this because that was just for testing and getting our feet wet with making connections and adding nodes. And let's hop over to the construction script and take a look at a node network that has already been set up that gives us the ability to customize this particular spotlight. And the reason that we can do that customization is that we have what we call variables that allows the user to define the property value of these variables that we set up. So you can see we have yaw, pitch, all those variables that are displayed inside of the details panel here that we can tune and tweak the way that this light functions. And the reason that we can do that is we've set these variables to be publicly editable. Now, publicly editable, you can make them publicly editable or not by clicking this I icon here. So say, for example, we don't want the users to be able to turn the light off. We can turn that button off. You'll see that the construction script actually fires when we make changes. That's one thing that is important to note with the construction script is that it fires whenever you make changes inside of the editor. It also fires once at runtime. So as soon as you start your game, the construction script will fire again as well. Let's turn this off. You can see it fires. If we compile and we go to the level editor, now in the details panel, we don't have the ability to actually turn this off. So this is a way to limit customization on some of your blueprints. If you are setting up tools for level designers or artists, even for yourself, you can enable the variables that are publicly editable or not inside of the My Blueprint panel here. Take a look at the construction script here, how things are working. Don't be alarmed if you don't know what some of these nodes do. Looks like whoever set up this blueprint did a good job of commenting our nodes network here. You can add comments to any block of script inside of your blueprint, and it's very handy for allowing people to come into your blueprint and see kind of what's going on from a high level without really having to understand what each node is doing. Adding comments can be done just by making a selection box and hitting the C key will allow you to add a comment. I put a comment inside of a comment, which probably wasn't a good idea. We don't need that. Here we have a section of nodes that allow us to apply pitch and yaw values to the spotlight meshes. If the turned off variable is on, then we're going to turn the light off. If it's not on, then we're going to set the material for the actual spotlight, set up the color, as well as the light beam. So that's essentially how the construction script is being used. So let's go ahead and close this out. Now you could use the construction script to do other things like if you have a fence, for example, and you want to dynamically add additional pieces to that fence, kind of spawning in or adding additional static meshes, you could set that up. An example of that is actually inside of our content example projects, if you want to take a look at that. But again, the construction script can be used to create prefabs that you can tune and tweak inside of the editor. The next example will allow us to look at how the event graph works. I'm actually going to back up a little bit here and play in the editor to just demonstrate this. So it looks very similar to the light that we had before, except this particular blueprint uses the event graph to determine whenever the player is near the spotlight and then it actually tracks us and follows us around as well. We're using the event graph to do this. Let's take a look at how that's working. So we still have our customizable properties in here that we can set up. If we go to edit this, we go to the blueprint editor here and we take a look at the construction script. It's very similar to the one that we had before, but on the event graph we have quite a bit more script that defines the logic of how that light knows when we are in range and what to do and how to manipulate the camera to actually follow the player. So there's all kinds of script in here. We're not going to go through this in detail, but just know that the event graph is used at runtime to update scripts and provide information that can be used to update your blueprint scripts, essentially. What I want to do is talk about Another type of graph that you may encounter or can use at your disposal when working with blueprints. The first of those, let's go ahead and select all of these nodes here. If we right click on a node, 
we have the ability to create some organizational graphs. And what I mean by that is, let's go to collapse to function first. We have all these nodes here, and if we select collapse to function, what it's going to do is populate it into a single node for us. So if I control Z to undo that, it's just a way of organizing things for you. So instead of having all this node network, you could take this particular one and right click on it and collapse to function. So now it's just a single function. And it actually adds it over in the function section here, which you can rename this to something else, a little bit more descriptive, which this determines whether the player is in range or not. So I would probably call this is in range or something like that. And if we go back to the event graph, now we have one node that does all of that for us. So it's very similar to what we had before. It's just collapsed into a little function here. Another thing that we could do is, let's take this section down here maybe. All of this information down here, all it really does is determine the rotation values to use for the spotlight mesh. So it's basically getting values for us to determine the rotation. So if I select all of this and I right click on it, and I collapse it to a macro. Similar to what it did with the function, it collapses it down to an individual node. Now you notice this one has no inputs, whereas our function actually has an input. That's one of the advantages to macros. They don't necessarily need to have an input coming into it. This particular function is just getting information for us and then spitting it out as one of these two values, at which point I would probably rename these as well to something a little bit more descriptive. So that's a macro. Again, that will add it over in the My Blueprint panel, which we could rename this as well, which we could say get rotation values or something like that. As always, we could double click and open that graph like so for a function or double click and open this graph as well. The last one that we'll talk about is collapsing nodes. So if I select all of these nodes here and I right click and I collapse these nodes, it's going to collapse them down into a collapsed graph, which we can give this a name. We'll just say it smoothly rotates spotlight. We can double click, open it up, and there's all of the blueprint nodes that we had before. So if we go back to our event graph, well, you can see how we can organize our graphs a little bit tidier by using these different graphs. The advantages to some of these the function, this is something that you can call from an external blueprint because it's a function. You can tap into this blueprint and call this function. As with a macro, the macro is more of a utility that you can use within this particular blueprint. You're not necessarily going to be calling it from external blueprints unless you set up a blueprint macro library. But again, that's outside the scope of this particular project. Collapse graphs is purely a way of condensing a particular graph. The good thing about the function as well, too, is that you can take the function and add it to different sections. So if you have something that you're doing multiple times, you can make a function for it and then just call that multiple times wherever you need to inside of your graph. The same thing with macros. Macros can do that as well. Collapse graphs, you cannot do that with. Let's go ahead and close this back out. We talked about construction script and event graphs. Now that we've covered how to move around the Blueprint Editor graphs and the different types of graphs that you'll be using, you should have a better understanding of what each graph can be used for. And if you need to, you may want to take some additional time exploring the graphs and practice navigating before moving on.